Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode five of the Miami Tech Pod. I'm Cesar Fernandez, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-hosts, Brian Breslin, Maria Durchi, and Will Weinrub. And we have a special pair of guests on the pod today, Joe and Yuma Mikola, uh, the co-founders of WinCode. Uh, I don't know if people have made this joke before, but can I call you the Mikolai? Is that is that appropriate? <laughs> works yeah regardless welcome to the miami tech pod we're excited to have you and uh we'll talk about win code and what you've built over the years and your exciting announcement this week in a bit uh but first you know what a week uh anyone still holding on to gamestop stock i bought no. some GameStop. i i, I want to be part of the, the revolution so i bought two shares just so i could say i'm part of the revolution against the big hedge hedge funds, you know. I want to be a part oh, of it. I love it. The Same. revolution cost me too much money. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, are you, uh, you know, in the in the category of uh, one thousand dollars or zero, or are you uh, you're out? I know. I'm holding. I'm holding strong. I mean, I bought yesterday just to like uh, be part of this uh, insanity, you know, because I figure <laughs> this will either go to a thousand or two thousand or. Hey, I'll lose a few hundred bucks, you know. And and Maria's being quiet because she's a Wall Street bets moderator and she doesn't want to reveal, you know, herself. But uh <laughs> No, I'm I'm a innocent bystander. I'm just watching the show from afar. Awesome. It's well, been fascinating. <laughs> Yeah, let, let's uh, let's jump into the episode. We can we can rant a little bit later about you know the revolution and, and see if there's any uh, you know good news that happens while we're recording here. Um, but you know, let, let's let's just jump into to WinCode and, and why don't you guys talk a little bit about uh, you know tell let's start at step one and, and you know I know some of our listeners are extremely familiar with WinCode. Some of our listeners have have been you know actual have gone through the boot camp themselves but why don't we take a step back and, and tell our listeners like what is wincode um and talk a little bit about the journey for building it love it you want to kick it off sure yeah i mean i think it's it's great to be on on the podcast because there there's a lot of uh connections to uh to you guys as well but i mean all of it started at a refresh miami meetup when we uh when we announced the plans to to start wincode and basically it's a uh, it's a boot camp that teaches, uh, you know, digital design, UX, UI, and, and web development skills. The whole idea was to bring something to Miami where we could help all the people in Miami that we felt had, you know, the, the motivation, the hustle, the work ethic to really get ahead and wanted to be in technology. But there was this gap in the training and the skills that they needed to get in order to, to find these jobs. And the crazy thing was the jobs were here too. So for us, uh, it really felt like a way to try to try to connect those two two sides of it. And I think the timing was. Now, when we look back, it was an amazing time to, to start something in Miami, but it was very early. It was definitely not a sure thing at that time that this could work. And there had been sort of some early uh, early attempts at it and, and maybe hadn't gone quite quite so well, you know, in, in those early times. And just an opportunity to try to really bring that that connection piece, I think, for the ecosystem. And now looking back with almost a thousand graduates and, and this awesome news of joining the BrainStation family, it's just been a really cool journey. And actually a fun uh, full circle for us also is the very first Miami tech event we went to ever when we were like scouting Miami as the place to be where we would open. We went to the lab Miami, went to a code for Miami meetup that was being run by Rebecca Monson and Ernie. And uh, now Ernie just celebrated a year on our team. He uh, he's going to be, he's uh, now going to be a team lead for web development for the Florida market. So that's pretty amazing that we're on this next chapter journey together, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, and he's always laughing because when we came and told him the idea, he was like, there had probably been 50 people before us saying like their startup ideas. And he was just trying to be nice to everyone and be like, sure, that's a really great idea. Why don't you go do that? And uh, he always laughs that we were the ones who actually went and did it. And he's like, I would have never thought I'd be working there, you know, and he's just been such an awesome team member and, and a great person to have on the squad. Yeah, amazing. All right, I, I want to talk a little bit about the acquisition and, and all this new chapter. It's super exciting. So you guys just announced that you were acquired by BrainStation. Super proud of you guys. That's very, very exciting news. We'd love to hear a little bit more about this partnership 
and how this all came together first off and then what this means moving forward for WinCode. So super exciting. I mean, we didn't go into the pandemic thinking we're going to sell. <laughs> we went into the pandemic thinking, wow, the world's a crazy place. Uh, how is our company going to be shaped by this? And, you know, now we're seeing like what happened. But I think um, so it's really interesting. We there's been a lot of stuff happening in the coding uh, and boot camp space, acquisitions, consolidation. Some people have closed. And something I think that's super special about this is BrainStation is a global player in our space. So essentially what I like, what I've been kind of joking about, but I, I mean very sincerely is we found our soulmate. Uh, when, the more and more we get to know them, even now, I'm, always, I'm like shocked at how aligned we are on mission and values. And it's really cool now because, you know, the, all the paperwork signed, we're one team. And so we can really see behind the curtain. Um, so I think the other thing I've been saying is, you know, what made WinCode WinCode uh, is none of that changes. Our whole team uh, is staying with us. All of the values that we hold dear are, are still going to be there. The way that we work with alumni, students, hiring partners uh, is still going to be there and improved. The thing that's changing, like what happens when you find your soulmate, your significant other, you get married is you change your name. Some people do that. In this case, we are doing it. So uh, our name is changing uh, and, and that'll be super exciting. It's like the next wave, the next chapter. And I mean, there's lots to talk about. I don't know if you wanna jump in and share some more, but it's really cool. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'd say one thing that we saw that was so interesting with the, the whole situation with, with COVID since March was just the fact that all of a sudden, like, you know, we went from being an in-person bootcamp to, to being a remote educator and doing everything online and, and virtually. and how effective that was and how all of a sudden we had like a global a global market that we could address and and we increased every cohort our numbers to numbers that we could have never had in an in-person situation we were able to scale up the team keep the quality going and we realized we were constantly finding more students from out of market and that was really really exciting we're like wow this is an awesome uh, awesome situation it was our, our best quarter ever last quarter so it was a really good opportunity to sort of have these conversations but i think one of the things we also noticed was that you know, for us to continue going down that path, um, you, the more resources you have, the better. Our, our hiring partner network is super strong in South Florida, but if one of our grads wanted a, a job in, in Colorado yeah. or New York or in California, we have a network, but it's not as strong as, you know, if we had a physical location there. So this really gives sort of everybody involved with the, the process, the opportunity to do things at a bigger scale. And I think that was super important for us. And then when we realized also that a lot of the ways that they've solved for this problem that that we've had this talent gap problem is very similar to how we've done it just made so much sense it was a really a really natural sort of alignment yeah and i i would also say you know as a founder it's um it's pretty cool to go from like a local regional player to a global global player overnight which you know and so for us to like be able to see how they're operating so our content and our mission are aligned but you know we didn't scale wing code to have the number of locations they have. So it it is very cool to like leapfrog into that arena for, for me personally as a founder. And then the, the other thing to that's fun to share is our focus is remains Florida 100%. Uh, if anything, what we're looking at now is uh, looking at how we can bring more of the brain station resources and firepower to South Florida. Uh, you guys will already probably see on brain station careers site on the Miami careers. There's tons of roles up. So if there's awesome people listening, we're hiring across the board um, and, uh, and, you know, enhancing the team. So that's, that's really fun too. Awesome. So I know that entrepreneurship can be very lonely and it has its ups and downs. And now going through this acquisition, I'm sure it's been a moment of reflection. So is there anything that you like, what is like the one big mistake or setback maybe you had while building WinCode that you want to help other entrepreneurs avoid? And and be honest, right? Like we want the worst <laughs> possible. You've mistake. already been acquired. They can't go back. So yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, the deal closed. We're trying to think. I was I was trying to think which one, you know, because there's there's so there's so many things you learn in seven years. But maybe I'll go first on that. Yeah, um, yeah but I, I think one. I mean, first of all, just Maria, you mentioned like kind of going through this process, and I just gotta say I've been feeling so grateful for like the support from the community and everyone who's like kind of helped us 
get to where we are today. Like it, it hasn't just, felt so lonely. Actually. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I got to say the community in Miami is very special. Like I think that obviously you have tough times, but I think like there's also been so many times when you're like, man, I'm glad I'm in this city, you know, where you have access to some amazing people. I think everyone's always amazing. rooting for each other. Yeah. They're trying to help each other. And I think you really notice that at, at these moments, but also sometimes when, when the going gets tough, right? You know that you, uh, you have help. But I think in terms of like, you know, lessons learned. I uh, most mostly, I'd say it, it was around. You know, we did raise money previously from from a, a, a large company in Europe, and you know, when we went through that process, it was really exciting. You know, we were able to get sort of more growth capital, but some of the, there were some challenges with that. Which what first? I mean, we were the only investment that they had made in the U.S. I think this the whole space was kind of new, and I think something that I, I learned a lot from there is like even if you're very sort of culturally aligned, I felt like values were really aligned. I think there were definitely differences in sort of how the businesses just operated and they were sort of completely different. Their business was essentially a consulting company. And I think that made it really challenging for us to like be able to be on the same page and kind of go in the, in the same direction. And I think now when we looked at this deal, it was really cool to find a player that like I said, we had kind of solved for the same problem in in the same way independently. And I think that like kind of helped us get through to, to finding that middle ground a lot quicker. So I think to make it like more of a piece of advice, I'd be like, as you're raising money or, you know, going to look potentially to sell your business is like, it's not enough to like maybe have that initial feeling of like, yeah, this is going to work. It's like maybe thinking it through more and being like, how is this actually going to integrate, you know, and how do these pieces fit together? And if it's not completely simple and, and logical, even if everybody has the best intentions, which they did, it can make for some challenging times down the road. Um, yeah, and it, it's funny, like everybody has heard that advice, like be very careful about what investors you bring in, like do your dil due diligence as well. Think, are they strategic or not? Basically all the things that everyone says, like the cliche stuff, like, man, we lived it. Like, it's so true. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I, I would agree with that too. So. Well, that's really fascinating and thank you guys for sharing some of these details that we otherwise wouldn't be hearing about what do you guys think though is the role of uh boot camps like wincode or i mean brain station in the development of local ecosystems so i think it's massive i mean i think in so boot camps were i feel like you know seven years ago we were all like bootstrapping it figuring it out trying to like get it all together like oh let's just put a senior dev in front of a bunch of people who are eager, eager to learn and it's going to work but now you know the boot camps and the good boot camps have like very good data metrics they have awesome like educational like pedagogy that works they're connected to industry in the way that big academics are not they're a lot more nimble and so what is the num what is the number one or two thing that everybody talks about in our ecosystem? Access to tech talent. Where is it? I need more of it. I can't hire it. And I feel like that's across the board for a lot of ecosystems. And I just think like for boot camps, obviously a little bias here, but uh, we're doing it faster, more efficiently. Uh, you know, and talk like we work very closely with Blackstone and it's really interesting even hearing from them. I mean, they're talking to everyone for talent because they can't get enough. But they're like, your guys' talent is so hyper-focused on exactly what we need because you better understand exactly what we're asking for. So I think that's uh, that's like unique and probably what sets boot camps apart. And I, I, think, I think education is evolving and things are changing. And I think boot camps are going to be continuing to pave the way of change. I definitely think universities and colleges play a role. I don't... I'm not like of the school for abolishing them or anything like that, but, uh, and, and I'm, they're likely going to catch I'm up. Getting there, they have a whole way. stuff, whole load of stuff to figure out uh, right now from student debt issues to like iterating curriculum at a snail pace to all this stuff that, you know, boot camps don't come up against. Yeah. And I, I can maybe add a little bit to that. I think that, you know, it, we've always taken this really seriously, but I think it's a, it's a unique, uh, business in a way that you get to be a real community player. You know, I think that that's like a really cool uh, aspect of it. And I think, you know, it's not something that is unique to WinCode. I think there's a lot of boot camps in different markets that have kind of taken this approach because it gives you this opportunity to really be local. You know, really, you kind of understand the needs of companies, you know, who's actually hiring locally, like who's got their dev teams in the city, you know, what's going on? Are they going or are they letting people go? Are they outsourcing or bringing jobs in? 
it's it's a really cool kind of place to be and and always trying to like figure out how can you help people you know and on the flip side that's on the company side you're also helping the people who want to get into tech and i think right now one of the coolest things is the conversation around miami tech in general you know and how much activity is happening and how much attention is kind of being placed on people moving you know here kind of successful people but also people who maybe see miami as a place where they can make it but i think what's so important is that we don't lose sight of the people already in Miami and how do we make that bridge for them to kind of reinvent themselves with the technology skills that they need. And I think boot camps play a really important role there because we are quick, we're you know effective, you get a good return on your investment and, and we're hyper-focused. So like if that's sort of the tech career you wanna to go to, we know a lot about that. And I think uh, BrainStation really shares that. I think they were really very um, high on Miami even before we started discussions. And I think what was really cool about that is you know, you look at the, the campuses they have right now, they're based in New York. That's their only U.S. campus at the moment. Miami is now their second, you know, and that's a really good sign for our city. It's we're going to get a lot of a uh, lot of attention from them and, and a lot of firepower and resources. And we just want to keep helping, keep tying up, uh, you know, these community connections and most importantly, helping people in Miami who are not in tech yet get into technology careers. I think that's so that's a great point I want to jump off of. You know, like, and I love how you guys were always so personable and like a human element to the community, you know, and I think there's, uh, and this, you're, you're absolutely right. This is all about people, right? Because companies are nothing if it wasn't for their people. Are there any highlight stories or like alums of Winco that you guys are particularly proud of? Like the transfer, the transformational nature of, you know, what you guys are doing or any other cool stories you want to share with us? Oh man, there's so many. I'll, I'll maybe just like give, preface this while you was thinking of a specific story. First, there's like too many to list. Um, I, I'm, I think about like, we've had a bunch of team members who came to us and said, you know what, I love being here. I really want to do the program. And now like, you know, I think of Diego who came from TFA, like working at Zendesk in, on the West Coast. We have people at like Amazon, JP Morgan, like, you know, all the big tech companies. So I'm, that, that's pretty amazing. It's hard to highlight specifics without spending a whole day chatting here because the backgrounds are so diverse from like attorney to stay at home mom uh, who are now like the breadwinners of their household, you know? So I think it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I will forever in my heart remember cohort one <laughs> since they were 14 crazy people who were like, Win code? Sure, let's do it. <laughs> so uh, they'll forever hold a special place in my heart. Yeah, for me, I mean, I, I agree. There's been so many awesome stories. I think the ones that are maybe the most dramatic are, are the ones that, that stick in my mind, you know, and there were a couple uh, really like stories that, that we read on our internal Slack, like after this was, was announced that like just really touched oh, me. You so know, what, what, one was, uh, <laughs> a student of ours who didn't go to college. So he came straight from high school, which is relatively rare. Most of our, our students have some college uh, uh, or, or a degree, you know, before they come to, to WinCode. And he said, you know, besides the boat that brought him into this country, WinCode was the single most important thing that's ever happened in his life. And, you know, he's a senior developer now at a, at a really well-known startup here in Miami. And, you know, just to hear that story. And he always tells me how, you know, he's now in charge of hiring his friends who went and did a computer science program and are kind of four or five years behind them. So it's like really awesome to, to hear that kind of like stories. And then we've also worked with Knight Foundation and, and Microsoft supported this for a while with the Future Leaders of Tech Scholarship, which is something we want to continue. And, and that's really helped underserved individuals. So there's so many there, but I remember the, the person who was able to help retire their mom and then their grandma or the person who was a cocktail waitress in Miami Beach. and now works for Wix, you know, it's just like these, these transitions are so cool. And, you know, they kind of add up and build this sort of fabric in the city where not only does it help that person, but it helps their family, it helps their extended family. And then I think the most important part is that those people are now open to hiring non-traditional people. So often they're the ones who will bring in another boot camp grad, mm -hmm. you know, or somebody else coming from a non-traditional background. And it kind of opens these pathways. And it's really exciting because it just makes our city so much more accessible, our tech talent more diverse, and it just builds on itself. It becomes this flywheel of sort of helping people get success where they otherwise couldn't. So you might start with one person, but you realize the impact is like 10, 15 people plus their extended families. So that's really cool. It's nice to have been in a business where, you know, that was a byproduct of it. Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. The the stories of, of impact. I mean, I know 
dozens of folks who've gone through your program and are now professional developers and building cool stuff. So, you know, and I think we, and product designers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think Will has a, a question. Yeah, before I get into that question, what you said it really it really tugs on the heartstrings. You know, again, it you know we've met. You know, I got how many years ago? Again, maybe it was eight years ago now. I don't. I can't even count at this point. But we we talk a lot as a community as the the, the tech ecosystem has been built in let's, let's say the last decade or so. We talk about what we can contribute to the community, things we can do, and things like the value that we can add. And you, I personally can't name many more people that have had it a bigger impact in the Miami tech ecosystem than Joe and Yuha and what you guys have done by not just, uh, you know, building WinCode as an incredible company that everybody can look and aspire to, like, wow, you can build these amazing companies here in South Florida, but the amount of lives that you've literally changed here in South Florida, not just addressing the talent gap that definitely existed back in when this ecosystem started and helping people find jobs and training folks to be placed into local companies, but just in general, those careers and those families' lives that you've changed just by creating WinCode and, and, and giving them that education to have a better future and a better career. Uh, my hat's off to you guys. I get inspired every time I think about it. So, Thanks uh, so much. Thanks, Will. And, and honestly, you hiring people from the program is like without that, this whole thing doesn't work, you know? So I think that's also something that's worth recognizing is like people like you in the community as, as entrepreneurs and leaders, like jumping out and, and supporting from day one. I mean, that just, we couldn't have done it without that, you know, and, and, and still this doesn't work without it. So I think it's so important. And you see the companies that are open to that and, and you know, have built a great culture around it. And, uh, you know, that, that's what we need more of. So thank you so much for that. Of course. I mean, as you guys were thinking about stories of, of, of graduates that went on to do amazing things, I can't help but think about one in particular, Bianca, who we hired straight out of WinCode, who, you know, came, was a junior developer at Live Ninja. She was an absolute rock star. I tell the story all the time. She outpaced many of the senior devs from a product productivity standpoint very, very quickly. And then I'll never forget that, you know, she pulled me off to the side one day and she said, I had a great time at Live Ninja, but I want to do what you're doing. I want to build my own company. And she went off and started this company that is now based in Charlotte, uh, Care, Care Club. Care Club. Mm -hmm. Care Club, Care Club yeah. incredible company. She's doing an incredible job as CEO. They're on a rapid growth trajectory. And there's no doubt that the basis of that success started at WinCode and just kind of exposing her to that world and, uh, you know, all the amazing things that she could accomplish in the tech industry. So hats off to you guys. So b before I get make this a whole sentimental segment and get all mushy. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that was deep, man. Like, yeah, that was sorry, <laughs> Got Joe and you on the podcast. I, you know, I got to get into it. Um, <laughs> M &A. I want to hit on m and real quick because a lot of folks listening, that's what they aspire for. Start a company, then sell their company really quickly. Uh, it doesn't have to be too in-depth, but at a high level, what did you look for when finding a good home for WinCode? You know, it's not like you were looking to sell it, you know, to anybody in particular. Obviously, BrainStation came. You found that it was a natural fit. What in particular made you feel like it was a natural fit in general? And then also, what's are some lessons that you learned through the M&A process, maybe at a high level that you could share with some of our listeners? Before you share, I will. I was telling you how this the other day, um, you know, you try to like read about it or listen on panels about M&A and doing deals so that you can learn. But man, you don't really learn until you go through it. Right. This is another one of those things where like you hear the, the best practices and the advice. But when you are in the in the midst and the momentum of a deal, like you're excited and adrenaline's going and sometimes you're angry and sometimes you're really excited and it depends. But your emotions can like take you down a path and keep you going or you can stay focused. And it's just it's so hard to know how to handle things as an individual until you're in it. Thank God you loves deal negotiation. Um, so I'm going to let him share because he really took the lead on it. Um, and then I'll share maybe a little bit about BrainStation. But yeah, so even though the first deal did, ended up not working, that AWX thing you all talked about, wow, like it taught us so much and ultimately brought us to this amazing outcome. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's 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 exciting. I think there's a, a lot of ways to look at it. I mean, I, I'm it's definitely a goal when you start a business, you know, and, and for me, this is my second business. So I think 
having run a business and sold it before was definitely really beneficial for for us when we started WinCode and kind of getting getting things up off the ground and, and running it. And my previous company was a lot smaller, you know, so you kind of learned certain lessons there and then, you know, maybe some bad habits also that hold you back when things are growing and, and scaling. But it, it's been a really interesting time, I think, for our space. You know, I think there's been a lot of development in seven years. And yeah, I've always tried to be somebody who takes every conversation. You know, I think you learn something from every call that you have, you know, and I think there's obviously when you look at markets, you know, now Miami's um, sort of reputation and, and sort of stature on, on the national scene is a lot better than it was when we started. I know at the beginning we sort of had to had to really explain and, and talk about why we're in Miami or, or like Joe alluded to, like why I mean, we opened in all these other cities and we didn't want to. We really wanted on the city where where we had started and where we made a conscious decision to move to to start this business and, and we felt that this was where we could have the biggest impact so i think when when sort of brain station um reached out to us it, it was interesting we were actually like having a couple of conversations at the same time and and it was really clear to us at, from that point that you know the things we had learned from sort of this previous deal about kind of who we who we even like entertain the conversation at a deeper level with it has to be someone who understands our business and why do we do things the way we do and you know do they care about quality is it is it all about students getting great return on investment and outcome are you constantly improving the things you're doing are you investing back into the business and i think one thing that was really cool about brain station from a business perspective was they talked about it as like a 50-year thesis you know they're like we really believe in this like this is not going away there's not something that's like you know, peaked. This is something that's only getting started and we're looking for the right people to help us, you know, make a big difference in this space. And as we learn more about them and, and what they've built, I think Joe and I still have this every day where we're like, man, it's so crazy how similarly we've kind of approached some of these topics. I think all of those things helped. And I think, uh, you know, once you sort of start from that common ground, it makes it a lot easier, you know, as you kind of go through the process. And for us, things that were really important was making sure that the community aspect of what we do and the focus on Miami and, and really like believing in the city was there. And I think that was there. And then also obviously the quality piece and, and making sure that our team would be intact and everybody would basically that this would not be a lateral move for everyone on our team, that everybody would kind of win out of this. That was that was like a really important piece for us as well. So yeah. those were uh, those were all things we thought about. Just to, not to like be too redundant, but just to go back, I, I think th when I think about like the AWX deal and this deal, like the question of do they really understand what we do and how we do it is, you know, it depends what you want. If you're going to continue in the business, if you want to continue in the business, that answer has to be yes. Uh, if you are looking for an exit where you're not going to stay on, then I mean, what do you care, right? They're they're looking to an investor is looking to put their money somewhere. But if you're going to continue, that's really important, I feel. And um, so I think I think that is like a big thing that aligned right away with Brain Station, obviously. And then I got to say, like the team, you know, when you're hiring people or you meet people and you just like vibe. You vibe with some people or you don't, you're on the same, you're synced or you're not. And we just, we were totally like on the same page and they're really smart, uh, fair, uh, hardworking people. So it just, uh, it was just, you, you know, right away, like when you know, you know, you know, and uh, I, I do think the human, like Brian was saying before, this is all about people and building a great company is about a great team. Uh, and it just, it's a good group of people. Like they're really awesome. And WinCode's team is really awesome. And it's only been one week of integrating and it's uh, it's already going so well. Well, That's awesome. so when when is the whole big rebrand? Is that happening this year? Are you changing the name from WinCode's Brain Station or is it gonna be a little mixture of the two? Can you spill any details on that? Yeah, I mean, it's actually happening right now. So part of part of like what <laughs> the uh, wedding happened. Yeah, the wedding exactly, happened. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, wedding, the wedding happened. It was a press release, and everybody was invited on LinkedIn, and it was nice to see all of you guys there. It was great. But, uh, but no, it, it all it's all happening quickly. One one reason for that is, you know, I think obviously for us, the hardest part about this was the win code name. You know, it obviously means right. a lot to us as founders, but I think also for our community and our team. And unfortunately, we're in a regulated industry, so when you're in an education industry you have to kind of you have to play by the rules and one of those rules is you can't have two names you can't have two licenses with the department of education we kind of weighed 
the pros and cons of like, well, what if we like remained win code for a while and then we sweet, you can never be both, you know? So it's like, when do we do this? And, and as we talked through it, there were a lot of advantages to just kind of like making the change happen right away, you know, and just kind of getting through that process really quickly. And what helped was like the courses they teach were very similar to what we teach. The length was the same, the costs were the same. So there were a lot of ways that we could kind of do this a, a lot faster. So, so yeah, the, the, we're, we're basically brain station today. Um, and, and we're obviously going to keep, you know, the win code name alive for, for uh, all of us that know win code and know that it's something that, you know, is part of the, the history of, of what we've been able to do and, and our grads, but we're officially part of the brain station family so you, uh, today. So, so if you guys excited. have uh, win code t-shirts, they're retro now. And I was about uh, to say, you know, those are the items. Yeah. We got we got to talk about it on Reddit and drive up the price of a win code retro <laughs> There's a secret Shopify store for the win code swag, and it's like we got we would get one order a month, and now we've had like 15 in like a few days. I'm like, oh, people are starting to the corner of the market on this right now. Yeah, me and well, Will that's are gonna be Will uh, and I running. Go, <laughs> we're we're saying the same joke. We're we're gonna be flipping uh, t-shirts on eBay. <laughs> nice. I'll be buying them probably. I I, I, I need one or two. Um, so re re really quick, cause you know, I think we, first of all, congratulations. I mean, this is really, really neat, um, to see kind of the, the, the journey and how it evolved for you guys. Um, I, we get the sense that there's going to be a lot of, you know, future success stories that, that we're going to be talking about. Um, there was some really big news this week that SoftBank made, uh, in this hundred million dollar fund for Miami companies. Um, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about that and go around here. You know, Will, what, what do you think, you know, as someone who, you know, has been a founder and a CEO of a company, um, what do you think that means to the people that either, you know, are in that early stage of, of their, uh, of building a company or are about to, you know, just jump in and finally take that leap and, and, and start their own company for, for the first time? Yeah, no, I think it's very exciting, uh, especially someone we know, Austin, was named as one of the initial founders that are going to receive part of that grant. So hats off to Austin, who was also on episode four of that's, the Miami Tech Pod. Right? And, who, and who and who to work at WinCode. Yeah. I, was, I was about to make that. Yeah, was, exactly. This so, community you know, has support, really supporting. It's awesome. Yeah, we probably met him at a Refresh Miami meetup. I'm so we'll throw certain. that in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's Poor all full circle. Yeah, it was, it, it was the podcast, guys. It was the it was the Miami Tech Pod bump. Um, <laughs> they just shot him up to the top of the funding list for That's for it. SoftBank's fund. Um, you know, come at yeah. us if you have a different opinion, but it's it's been decided. We are right. We have eight listeners, and maybe Marcelo's one of the eight listeners. That, uh, <laughs> That's, all you need. Yeah. That's it. Um, no, to, to answer your question, Caesar, uh, and, and I'm curious to, to hear also what Joe and Yuha think on this. I think it's obviously a big win for Miami. It, it, it's nice to see like a, a fund the size of SoftBanks to have a Miami specific focus. But I really think it's beyond just this fund announcement. This is one fund. There's other funds that are you know, sizable as well that have interest in Miami and that obviously Miami entrepreneurs can apply to. But what it does is it sends a signal to other big funds around the world that Miami needs to be taken seriously. And that Miami as an ecosystem is, is growing rapidly and that there's amazing innovation here and that there's gonna be competition, that if entrepreneurs are here in Miami, there are VC dollars waiting for them. And I think that a rising tide lifts all ships in that regard. So when you have someone with the clout of a Marcelo and SoftBank making the statement with the mayor on a live stream, that can only benefit you know, the whole ecosystem because a lot of other funds are gonna take notice of that and they're gonna say, well, we need a South Florida strategy as well. We need boots on the ground in Miami. And that's just gonna benefit the founders as well. You're gonna see more companies founded here. Uh, it's one of the necessary ingredients that you need to have in an ecosystem is fresh capital. Um, and it feels like Miami is about to have that in spades. And wow, what a difference uh, a few years makes because Joe, you, you have firsthand experience where we had to answer the question, why Miami? Why don't you move to New York or, or San Francisco or LA? Uh, it doesn't feel like we have to answer that question ever again. Uh, so I wanted to get your, your, your take on all that. 
you want to jump? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll go for it. I mean, first of all, I think it's an awesome announcement. It's super cool. And I think it, it's just kind of following in the footsteps of, of a lot of the stuff that we've all seen and been a part of, like on Twitter and, you know, these WhatsApp groups and everything as we see more and more investors coming into uh, into the city and wanting to invest. I think what's important is they're not coming here to retire. You know, they're wanting to invest in Miami people and Miami companies. And I think, Brian, you said somewhere like, hey, is anybody else thinking of like, you know, doing a startup right now? This is a great time. You know, like, should we be launching something? So I think like it's it's really, you know, that that's, I think, a perfect example of like one of the biggest things that people would say is like, you know, Miami's missing talent. I think we've been trying to help fix that and, and have come a long way. And the other was capital. You know, it's like you, you have all this money, but it's real estate money or retired people or whatever else. And I think we're seeing that being solved in a really huge way. So, you know, beyond those issues, and it's debatable even how big issues they were, I think still good founders were finding money and were able to, to, to operate. But I think that this goes beyond being able to help founders currently, it, it really shows a light to other people who might not be founders yet to be like, this is the time to do this and jump in and, and start a company because you have all these people that are, are wanting to invest and, and support and probably also showing, and I know that's not maybe our, our main goal, we want to help Miami and help Miami grow, but you're also showing to people outside of Miami that this is the time to come here and uh, move and, and set up your roots here. And it's something that we decided to do seven years ago is the best decision we ever made, you know, and I really can't talk enough about how I think for anybody, anywhere you are in the US or around the world, like you have to consider Miami as like the perfect place to come to right now and and, and build a business and build a company. And uh, so I think it's really cool. It's awesome to, to see Marcelo make that that commitment and and uh, hopefully, you know, not, we already have people here, but hopefully it's gonna get even more people to to invest and, and to start businesses. Brian's launching his next startup. He's gonna announce <laughs> I gotta it on say. the podcast week. I gotta say, I've been having serious FOMO and like getting that itch. I've been talking to Will and Caesar about this, you know, like I'm first money in. I'm first money in on the deal. I have fifty yeah, I bucks. I could feel it. I could see it. I could feel it. <laughs> I'm, I'm only accepting Dogecoin as uh, investments. Um, <laughs> I know it, it's serious. Like the fact that there's so much money and then it's so seemingly accessible, right? And you know, and there seems like there's more capital capital available for you know startups. I think it's going to inspire a lot of people who were otherwise sitting on the sidelines, who had ideas that could have worked or can work, you know, and like uh, inspire them to start stuff. I mean, I'm not kidding. I like I have that itch. I, I, there's a couple ideas that I've been thinking about, and like I've been having conversations with you know, my friends about, you know, what should we be doing next? Like if there's ever, if there was ever a better time in Miami to start a business, like, I don't know of it, you know, this is sort of Agreed. the perfect form, you know, I think for starting a tech business down here. Yeah. And I mean, you all have been in the ecosystem a long time and I remember the early days and there was talk like, you know, we need to bring capital and there is a few like announcements back then. And, uh, you know, I, I, th I feel like this is, a testament to sometimes it just takes time and momentum and you know you all have been working for many years to like build momentum and keep it going and i feel like this is an example of what happens when there are good people in the ecosystem so i i think this is just the beginning and it's really cool to live through it i think like you know you don't always you can work hard at something but it doesn't always work out and you don't get to see the sort of end result of that. And I don't think we're anywhere near the end right now, but I think to see this actual momentum and how how it's like seemingly random events and tweets from the mayor and, you know, all these unrelated things that sort of came together to make all this happen. But like, what a cool moment we're all living through. You know, I think we got to step back sometimes and enjoy and just be like, this is really awesome. And and uh, hopefully it is going to get more and more great founders to, to jump in and be like, I'm ready. You know, this is the this is the moment I was waiting for. Yeah. Speak, speaking of, you know, more new great founders coming to Miami and, and the ecosystem, Maria, you've been, um, you know, out there doing a lot of networking. We joked on the last pod that you're literally picking people up as an Uber driver from the airport and, you know, pitching <laughs> them on, on getting involved in, in our community. But, um, you know, what, what is your sense of, of that, you know, that, that talent pool, right? Is it, do you, do you get the sense that the people that are coming here are like, really impressive and energetic and um, have good ideas or is it more whatever the opposite of that is is it more you know they're they're coming um, to just kind of like camp out for a few months and figure things out but not extremely committed to building 
companies here? Uh, I think the former. I think they're really excited. Um, I, I, some are, you know, taking advantage that their employers allow them to work remotely and hopefully with the plan to convince them or hope that it'll stay that way. Uh, I hosted a few calls a few weeks back and it was inspiring to see. I kind of just put up a form on Twitter that you could fill out if you wanted to join this call. And it was not just the, I think about 150 people responded around 40 to 50 were entrepreneurs, uh, a good amount of investors, but then there was a ton of technical talent. So I hosted different calls. I was able to kind of break them into one focused on product and data scientists, one on growth and marketing and sales folks, another for engineers. So it's really been a, really good to see that it's kind of like all elements of what we need and not just like investors or founders. It's kind of like you need that whole support system. Uh, and the, from my interactions with them, they're really excited. They want to be involved. They want to take a big bet on Miami. And yeah, so it's been it's been great to see. Be honest, the, Zoom, the, the, the weekly Zoom meetings <laughs> are kind of like a recruitment tool for Brian's startup, right? It's a whole funnel for <laughs> talent because he he's going to move quickly something and there's going to be soft bank um, money it'll be listen, filled by this type of, uh, all, this, all that talent listen caesar this has been a long con the whole time i've been getting data on everybody in south florida for the last 15 years very very slowly <laughs> that's what this has all been yeah a few a few months ago i asked brandon i'm like hey do you want to start a he's like yes i absolutely want to start a <laughs> podcast so, I, I'm I'm with you. It's a long con. It's been successful. Um, what else has been going on this week? I feel like uh, you know it's been uh, all, all eyes have been on uh, the 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 markets and the revolution uh, via Reddit. But anything else exciting? Folks want to chat before we wrap up here? Well, there's lots happening on Clubhouse. Also, I'm like pretty new new to that environment. But uh, I'm a, I'm a lurker. I, I haven't. Uh, a lurker. I haven't jumped so, into the hosting uh, category over there. So do we think Clubhouse is worth $2 billion or it should be worth more? There's no less. There's no less. It's already been decided that it's at least $2 billion. <laughs> I, I, think it, I, I think it should be worth um, less than GameStop. Um, <laughs> You mean the valuation. newest Fortune 100 company? <laughs> yeah. It's because Clubhouse doesn't have enough physical infrastructure. If only they had old legacy stores, then it would change my mind. Yeah, if if but, only they, they used a bunch of square footage to get people to watch movies in uh, for extended periods of time and then sell popcorn at them, they could really pop in, in their stock price. I mean, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Or, what a or, crazy if access, or if you can only access Clubhouse via old school Nokia phone. <laughs> that yeah. 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 There you go. yeah. I like that idea. I'll send you a BlackBerry Messenger to talk about that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so funny. Did, did anyone have Nextels here? The chirp? Of course. Yeah. That, that, was, a, that was a vibe. I, <laughs> I thought I was so cool at the moment. <laughs> It was a uh, it was adult walkie talkie. Walkie -talkie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, uh, we'll wrap up episode five of the Miami Tech Pod. Uh, Joe and Yuha, th thank you so much for for joining. You know this this episode. Congrats on all the success. If our oh, listeners want to learn a little bit more about BrainStation and uh, reach out to you guys, where can they go? So check out, you can still go to the wingcode.co website. Uh, there's information there and eventually it's going to redirect, but brainstation.io and you can select the Miami location. Um, and it's the same WinCode team who's going to take you through the whole process, which is awesome. And like Joe mentioned, we're hiring a lot of new roles. So if you or anybody you know is looking to... Uh, get into the technology scene and, and want to work with us, we'd love to meet you. So check out the careers page on, on Braid Station's website. Wonderful. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, this was episode five of the Miami Tech Pod. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, wow. Google Podcasts, or your favorite uh, podcast app. And please visit five us. Five stars. Five stars, like Brian said. Uh, please visit <laughs> us at miamitechpod.com and follow us on Twitter at Miami Tech Pod. And please share and rate this episode. You know, it really helps uh, get the word out for our growing audience here. 
And whoever is interested in learning more about the Miami Tech community, make sure to forward this episode. Thank you so much and see you next week.